Welcome to a Monday edition of Auto Week TV. Summer officially kicks into gear tomorrow. We say celebrate by dropping in on a local car show. Or just take the time to give your favorite ride a good cleaning so it will be ready to cruise. Here's what's going on in our auto world. Mercedes-Benz is planning a rival to the BMW X6 based on the redesigned M-Class SUV. This new SUV, which could be called the GLS, will have seating for four people. It's likely to go on sale in 2014, according to Auto Car Magazine. And yes, we expect there's an AMG version in the plan. Here's the latest twist in the story of what will happen with Maybach. If a partnership with Aston Martin doesn't pan out, Maybach could just become a sub-brand of Mercedes-Benz, company insiders say. That would be similar to Scion being a sub-brand of Toyota. Daimler insiders say the deadline for a Maybach decision has been pushed back to late July. BMW is not sure whether it will go ahead and put the mini Rocketman concept into production. Why? Because execs aren't sure that the pint-sized Rocketman, which is about the same size as a smart car, can make a profit. The Rocketman was introduced at the Geneva Motor Show last March. It uses a shortened version of the standard Mini Cooper's platform. Finally for today, the original Toyota Land Cruiser and Jeep CJ were classic vehicles for driving through the rough stuff. Now, entrepreneur Jonathan Ward of Icon in California has a modern take on these off-roaders. He explains. To my left is a Icon FJ44. That's our newest model. So the idea was to continue the original design ethic of the FJ40, but allow the whole family to come along. So we created a four-door version, and then we do different seating configurations. This one's running the six passenger setup. And then on my right, we have our willies, we belovingly call the dog. After the end of World War II, the CJ3B quickly earned the nickname of dog face or the dog because of that high grill line. Uh, we chose it for two reasons. One, it's the ugliest, so it has the most charm and distinction. And secondly, that high line of the hood gives us all sorts of options into the future for all sorts of potential drivetrain variants. All little details really are, are like bespoke or handmade. And oftentimes that meant we got out of traditional automotive sourcing and got into aircraft and military and marine industry sources. The body on our FJ is provided by a company that's been doing reproduction classic Willys bodies for about 40 years. That in fact is the only component on both icons that we import. Those are made in the Philippines. Um, the engines are General Motors, so we offer gasoline or diesel variants. The Dog, the CJ, runs the Ecotec variable valve timing 4-banger. And then my FJ runs either the 5.3 or 6.0 LS series fuel-injected V8. To get the fit and finish and the industrial quality that we wanted for the longevity, because the idea is the truck should last for decades, we went to all sorts of creative sources. So these come from a company called Destaco and they've been doing like meat lockers and sub-zero fridges. They've been stamping this part here in Detroit for about 80 years. And that maintains the original ethic of the folding down windshield frame. Uh, this is a one-off thing we just did as a gift for the client who owns this truck because he's really into vintage planes. So that's from an old MIG jet. These we uh, CNC out of solid chunks of billet aluminum. And then we knurl them on a 1940s Cadillac lathe. Then we engrave them and then we enamel them. But again, I couldn't find any that were really proper and bespoke. Uh, instrumentation is just stock out of the box, US made auto meter. But again, the cluster is all CNC'd in our own design, and all the ghost indicators are all diode based. Thanks, Jonathan. Even I can tackle the Rubicon in one of those. That's a wrap for today. Keep up with all the car and racing news at AutoWeek.com. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, enjoy the drive. Thanks for watching today's edition of AutoWeek TV. Be sure to catch all the latest car enthusiast news on AutoWeek.com, in AutoWeek Magazine, and in AutoWeek's iPad edition.